What's up guys, welcome to Rears Avenue, my name is Darren and today is another slow news day uh, but I was able to find uh, some little nidbits of, of news uh, to talk about um, and by the way, it is scorching hot in my house right now, oh my god um, I am so dedicated to this channel that I'm shooting this video while I'm sweating Oh god, okay, here we go um, <laughs> Alright, so the first story is going to be the Joaquin, uh, Joaquin Phoenix story. So uh, basically Joaquin Phoenix, you know, he's doing the Joker movie uh, and he came out and he did an interview and he talked about how he found his Joker laugh. And uh, let me just read you the quote that he, uh, that he uh, said here. He says, I started from here. I saw videos showing people suffering from pathological laughter, a psychic dysfunction that makes mimicry Un uncontrollable so um yeah there it is so he actually went online and he saw and he watched videos of people just uncontrolled uncontrollably laugh um and i went on on youtube and i, I found a few videos uh of, pe of people like just, just could not control their laugh at all uh, and i'm gonna show you one clip right here <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good, definitely. All right, so as you can see, this guy, this particular guy, it looks like he was trying to hold his laugh, um, but he could not do it. Even though he thought he was cool, he s still burst out in laughter. Um, and I'm not quite sure if it's fake, but there are plenty of videos on YouTube that you could find online that that have people that show people just laughing uncontrollably. Um, and yeah, this guy looks. I mean, based off the video, I mean, it looks like he he, he really couldn't control it. Um, I did not know that was a thing at all, uh, but prayers to that guy if it is real. Um, I wouldn't want to be laughing all the time, even though like it, it, it feels good to laugh, but um, not being able to control it, uh, that is pretty scary because I mean there are times where we want to stay serious at work, at a funeral, at church or whatever, and you want to laugh, right? Um, so this is really interesting uh, to find because you know we never heard um, how like the previous actors that played Joker, how did they find their laugh? Um, I mean, there were, I think, I think I've read something online that Heath Ledger, like, you know, he locked himself in a room and then he tried to find his laugh uh, somehow, uh, and he played with different laughters, um, but he never said, you know, he never like really studied like a, um, like a mental disorder or a disorder, like a, like a disorder like this one. Um, I mean, there was this, there's this notebook that he wrote, um, and in the notebook there were hyenas and people think that's how he found his laugh through the hyenas um, Which is kind of dumb, but that's what the internet thinks and uh, yeah, so I think uh, The fact that you know Joaquin Phoenix is coming out and saying how he found his laughter is really interesting and makes me want to see this Joker movie even more um, and it makes it makes it feel really grounded and something that I personally love about this movie super grounded um, and yeah, I'm totally excited about that. Um, let me know what you guys think about this story. It's super interesting. And uh, let's jump to the next one. All right, so the next um, the next story comes from uh, comicbook.com. And it's pretty much Sean Gunn, the, the brother of James Gunn, uh, pretty much saying that, you know, he's praising the, the Suicide Squad script that his brother, brother uh, James Gunn is writing. And this is what he said. He said, well, See, I know that James, he's very excited about shooting and now that I have read the script for it, I will say nothing other than it, it, that it's really good. And I know that he's pretty jazzed about it, so I'm definitely excited to hear what happens next, but they start shooting soon. So, 
I mean, he, I mean, Sean Gunn is his brother, so he may be biased. He may not be. Um, but he, I just love hearing positive news about you know the, you know upcoming DC movies, just because you know we don't like hearing when like when scripts goes over when they uh, keeps going under rewrites and rewrites and rewrites, like The Flash, and like how um, you know the Batman went. Um, and so I, it's it's good to see or good to hear uh, people praising uh, what what this Suicide Squad movie is is coming to be um, because the last one definitely needs some work <laughs> I mean I, I feel like even though if they added the Joker uh, scenes that was cut from uh, from David Ayer's films I, I think it wouldn't be that great um, I, I don't think it would be as successful as people think I think it would make it a little bit better but I don't think we would I don't think it's night and day um, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just gonna live by that um, but yeah, I think this is great news. Um, totally excited for what James Gunn is able to bring to the, the new Suicide Squad movie. He's saying it's not a sequel, but it sounds like it's a sequel because uh, there are some returning cast members are going to be coming back, like um, like uh, like Harley Quinn's going to be coming back, and oh yeah, uh, Amanda Waller is going to come back too. So they're them two are going to come back, and I think Boomerang is going to come back too. Not sure. Uh, I think he is. Correct me on that one. All right, so the next story is coming from the old Justice League movie that was supposed to come out uh, that was originally directed by George Miller. And the actor that that was going to play The Flash, uh, Adam Brody, he came out and talked about um, not doing The Flash in the in the Justice League Mortal movie. He, so he said this. He says, in hindsight, I should have been more bummed at the time. I really liked it, but I just said, oh, I just kind of felt like no big deal. The next thing will come. And it kind of did, but it kind of didn't. But nothing like that came along again. And then he praises the Justice League Mortal script. And he says, the script was really good. It's not that it was revolutionary. And I'm pretty objective about this kind of thing. And I think I have a pretty good gauge of scripts. I thought the casting was right, not just for me, but everyone. Tonally was going to fit right. Ah, oh, man. So every time I hear stuff about the Justice League Mortal, stuff that comes out in the news uh, every time uh, time and time again uh, it gets me really bummed out because I remember at the time I was super excited about this movie after hearing that Common was going to play as Jon Stewart I was super on board I'm like oh my god that's so perfect casting right there you, you know just coming off of like what Just League Animated uh, show was doing and then you know that you know that Jon Stewart that was in the Just League looks so much like the com like like Common <laughs> the common common um and i thought it, i thought it was so perfect and so um i was super excited about it i think this is around like 2009 2010 and this was when i was like really getting into comics um this is when i was like like really starting out and just reading comics and so all my like my my my, uh, my nerd worlds were just coming together um and you know and then hearing that they they dropped it oh, i was super bummed out super bummed out but at the time we were already you know, um, I think we we're already uh, going to see Man of Steel, and so I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense," because Henry Cavill is not going to be in this Justice League movie. So, and it, it didn't, it, it sounded awkward, right? So, uh, it, it made sense to me that that they were going to drop this Justice League Mortal movie um, because of what they're doing in the Snyderverse. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm really curious on what it would have turned out like. You know, I mean, George Miller is a fantastic director. Um, I think the all the photos that I saw. Uh, that was released in uh, from the Justice League Mortal really kept me curious. Uh, I mean, not all of it was amazing. Uh, I think Batman's um, Batman costume looked kind of weird, and I think the Flash's costume looked too campy. Um, but uh, oh yeah, Superman one was was kind of looked pretty dumb as well. Uh, but there's there's some good moments in there. I think I think the Aquaman one. I think the Aquaman costume looked good. Uh, I think the Martian Manhunter looked amazing. Actually, um, <laughs> it, they made it real. It wasn't CGI at all. Uh, practical effects. Um, so it was really cool. So uh, yeah, this totally bums me out because I think Adam Brody would have brought so much to the Flash role, especially as Barry Allen. I think he would have done better than what Ezra Miller brought to the screen. Uh, probably not as good as Grant Gustin, but probably around the same area. Because um, I, I really think Adam Brody is Barry Allen. He, uh, or not, if, if not Barry Allen, then definitely Wally West, uh, for sure. All right, so 
Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about today is this Chris, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. So previously, Tom Welling has been rumored and then shot down, then rumored that he may be appearing in this Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover on the CW show. Um, and someone came on on Instagram and it looked like Tom Welling responded confirming that he will be in uh, the the crossover event this year. So this is what the this is how the conversation went on Instagram. So ba basically, the commenter said. I hope you're in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Tom Welling responds, duh. So, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 the most unprofessional way to well, confirm that you're in some big event. But, I mean, duh sounds like a confirmation to me. I mean, he could obviously be messing around with the fan, um, but I think he knows that everyone wants him on this crossover. Um, and it, he doesn't even have to put on the suit. He could just appear somehow and just wear his red vest or his red uh, jean jacket and we would all be excited, right? Uh, that's all he needs to do. And it, just film for one day. It'll only take like maybe five hours or three hours, however long. And uh, just get the, it, it just boost up the ratings, right? And just get us like, all excited and keep us fans happy. Um, Tom Wally, come on, man. You haven't done much. I, you know, every time like these like, Every time like a show runs for like 10 seasons and then you really fall in love with the cast, then you hope the best for the cast and the actor, the actors that, that are in there to have a successful career. And a lot of them don't. And Tom Welling is one of them, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I mean, I know he produced and he directed, but he didn't really go that far. And I'm not following him anymore, so I couldn't tell you what he's doing. So um, but yeah, but that's pretty much it for today's video. I wanna know your guys' thoughts on all of this. And um, let me know in the comments below, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys again, bye.